Hi, my name is Jamie Pence from VideoBread, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up the Mars Vibe system with Eximetry. Let's get started. So here's the Mars system, and here are our rovers, and here is a sync generator that will provide Genlock to our system. I've got everything set up at 2997P. I like taking labels and throwing on our rovers, just so when we're in the studio, we know which one's which in case we want to change it out. We've got our base stations. We've got them permanently mounted about nine to nine and a half feet in our studio. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Rover 1 and we're going to put it on our Ursa Pro Mini G2. We want to get it on here snug and tight and we want to make sure that the front arrow is pointing towards the lens. Once we get that situated, we are going to connect the ethernet cable that supplies power and gives us the position in 3D space. We're now going to take the second rover, and this is used for our center point, you know, recentering our scene. And we're going to put that into rover two. And once again, we're going to plug in the ethernet port, and we've marked a center point in our studio, and we're going to place that rover there. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is since the HTC Vive Mars talks to Eximetry, through the 3D protocol, and I have a second ethernet port on my machine, I just want to set up a network just for 3D protocol. So there's another network traffic, things like that. It's very simple to do. We're going to go to our control panel. I'm going to go to network and internet. I'm going to go to network and sharing center. And if you see right here is my second ethernet port that's not being used. We're going to click on that. We're going to go to Properties. We're going to go to Internet Protocol version 4. And we're going to go to Properties. And right here, I'm just going to type in 192.168. I'm going to use 86. And this machine is going to be 10. Do not forget that, because we're going to come back to that in a second. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close. I'm going to close here. I'm going to go to change adapter settings, and I'm going to change this. I'm going to rename this from Ethernet 2 to Free D. And now when we go here, there's Free D. We're going to look at our details, and there is our IP address and our subnet mask. And we're going to remember that for later when we're setting up the Mars. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the rovers to the Mars. So we're going to take Rover 1, we're going to plug that into 1, and we're going to take Rover 2, and we're going to plug that into 2. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to power the sync generator, because we need to get Genlock and sync to the Mars. So we're going to plug in this reference out from the sync generator. We're going to plug that into the Mars. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put power to the Mars. Then we're going to connect our secondary network, and i got a small switch for that. We're going to plug that network into here. That's going into the switch. And now we're going to plug that into our second Ethernet port of our machine. We're going to lay this back down here. And now we're going to connect the Genlock for the Blackmagic card. And then we're going to connect the Genlock to the Ursa Pro. And once again, the Genlock is set at 2997P. Now we're going to connect the reference to the Blackmagic card. We're going to take our video out from the Ursa, put it into input 1. And we're going to take video out of our AK Pro from output number 4 going into our studio monitor. A quick way to figure out if the deck link has been Genlocked is we're going to go to our desktop video setup. And if you look here, our reference input, 1080p 2997. So we know for a fact right now that our deck link is gen locked to the sync generator. So now let's move to the Ursa and take a peek at how we connect that. So here is the reference in. This is coming from the sync generator that we just connected a few minutes ago. And here is the SDI video out that we plugged into input one of the Blackmagic card. So 
the fastest way to check to see if the URSA is genlocked is you'll see a reference indicator next to the time code. Okay, so here we are. Let's start the Mars Vibe system up. And ever since I saw this at NEB this year, I've been so excited about having a low cost, broadcast quality tracking solution that has Genlock, time code, uh, live link, 3D protocol. It's really exciting. The guys at HTC Vive and Tim Wynn, they've just been amazing. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit so we can watch this boot up. And the first thing you'll see is our rovers have been found and so have all four of our base stations. And our gen lock is at 2997. But we need to get the Vive Mars on our network, on our 3D network. So we're gonna go and we're gonna do a static IP. We're gonna type in 192.168.86.20. We're gonna leave the subnet mask totally the same. We're gonna take our default gateway and we're gonna go 192 dot one six eight dot eight six dot one and we're gonna, we're going to enter that and the mars vibe will have to reboot uh to get the ip settings in and once it does we're going to be able to get this 3d stuff going and so here we are i'm letting it fast forward everything's connected we're going to select this. We're going to go to camera tracking protocols. We are going to enable free D and remember the IP address I told you earlier of our main machine. It's 192.168.86.10. And check out our port. Our port is 2000. That's pretty important too. So we're going to hit apply. Our gen lock's active, everything's ready to go from the sync generator. Okay, let's go do a lens calibration with Eximetry's amazing new camera calibration tool. And while we're doing that, we're gonna feed Eximetry this amazing 3D data from the Vive Mars. Let's get at it. Okay, now we're going to calibrate our lens with Eximetry's new awesome camera calibration tool. Uh, please make sure that you don't make a mistake like I did when I originally started testing this out. This needs to be printed at 100%. And it needs to be printed on some kind of hard backing. Um, your local FedEx store, your UPS store, they can totally help you with this. Or you can buy it off of Eximetry's website. But this calibration tool is absolutely amazing. So we're gonna set it down on this chair here. And what I normally like to do is just throw a little bit of uh, grip tape, gaff tape, just to hold it in place. And we're gonna start calibrating. Okay, so we have our camera calibration card set up. We've got all the rovers connected. We've got Mars launched. We've got the 3D protocol being sent to Eximetry. So what we need to do now is we're gonna calibrate a new lens and set up 3D. And this is so easy and so much fun. And I cannot tell you how awesome the new lens calibration tool is from Eximetry. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go to the camera calibrator tool. And the first thing we're gonna check is we're gonna make sure that our video output is going to our fourth deck link output and that we're at 2997. I'm gonna to go to device mapper and make sure our input is at 2997. And on the output, we wanna make sure that we got the sync selected. So now we're gonna to go to manage devices and we're gonna go down here to 3D. And I'm gonna add a camera. And if you remember the port number that we were using over UDP was 2000. Okay, so we're gonna hit okay on that. We're gonna hit apply and that's UDP port 2000. So now we're gonna go to camera tracking and we're gonna select 3D port 2000. Okay, so we're gonna hit start 
And now we're going to add the lens that we want to calibrate. And today we're going to be calibrating a Rokinon 24 millimeter. I'm going to hit OK on that. And the sensor width, we know we're using a Ursa Mini Pro G2, so we're going to select that. We're going to calibrate the lens. And this is for, for example, if you were using a lens encoder, like if you're using a zoom lens, you can do something that is adjustable. And to get your different uh, camera distortions on your different uh, FOVs, uh, this is a fixed lens. So we're going to go with the fixed lens uh, setup. And now I'm going to run out and I'm going to move the camera while Misha hits next on every point and angle that we'll be capturing for the lens distortion. Once again, I cannot tell you how awesome this new camera calibration tool is. Ursula, Peter, Zoltan, Gabe, and the Ximetry team, you guys have done an amazing job of putting together a great calibration tool for our lenses. Thank you. I highly suggest, once again, print this on some kind of professional backing. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Uh, like I said, your UPS or FedEx it can do that for you. And I highly suggest, you know, getting some uh, dolly wheels for your tripod because you do have to move to a lot of different positions. Each fixed lens takes about 10 minutes and we're not gonna watch this whole 10 minutes. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, find some needle drop that I imagine my buddies on the Facebook group, Johan and Richard, listen to when they're bored in the evenings and having a beer. And I highly, highly suggest to find the Eximetry Unreal Facebook group. It's a lot of fun. Okay, now that we have our lens calibrated, we are going to now calibrate the tracking of our lens and camera in space. So we're gonna lay this down on the ground here. We're gonna move our chair out of the way. And now we're gonna start calibrating the tracking. And once again, having dolly wheels, I mean, you can just calibrate so many lenses in a short period of time. So I'm gonna fast forward through this too. And here's another hit uh, that Johan and Richard would listen to on Needle Drop. Okay, so we use the Eximetry camera calibrator. We have figured out our lens distortion. We have figured out our tracking area. And once again, the Eximetry ca camera calibration tool is so awesome. It's really fun to use. What we need to do now is we need to figure out our tracking delay. And so I've built a sample scene that already has a track camera in it. And uh, we're gonna use that to figure out our tracking delay. First thing is we wanna make sure that our output is still at 2997, 1080p. We want, to, we want to make sure that this is synced. We're gonna to go to our device mapper. We want to make sure our input is 1080p, 2997. And then we're gonna to go to our camera tracking and we're gonna double check to make sure that the lens that we've calibrated is there. And then we're gonna hit start. Okay, I'm gonna make a new compound. I'm gonna bring in our scene. Then I gotta find the Unreal Tracked camera. There we go, it's right there. We are then gonna connect these real quick, connect these pins, our outsize, our control data, our B texture. 
our B reflection texture, our B shadow texture. We're going to take our out into rendered and B mask into B mask. Take our preview and look, there's a scene. And we're going to take our out to feed the deck link. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that, you know, we have marked a center point in our studio. It's not really the center point, but that's sort of where we want, you know, things to focus around. So I'm going to ask Misha to take out that second rover to a place that we've marked in our studio. And I'm going to recenter everything here. And we are recentered. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this key real quick, just so you know we can you know look at the tracking. So I'm going to go to the inputs. I'm going to go to keyer. I'm going to select monitor mode. I'm going to select input. I'm going to color pick the green here. I will then go to final to look at that. I'm going to look at the mat just to, and I'm going to tweak this mat here with the low cut and high cut. Okay, and that'll be good enough to figure out sort of what we're doing uh, with our delay. I'm going to move the scene around. I'm going to rotate it just so we have a little bit more of a, an area to, to look at here. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask Misha to pan the camera fast left and right so we can sort of figure out this delay. And I'm going to start here, start bringing it up a little faster there, Michelle. And I think that's it. Okay, if you don't mind, go ahead and recenter that. I'm going to just add a little bit more to that. Okay, go ahead and pan fast again for me. Okay, recenter it. Perfect. So the cool thing about the studio section here is, let's say for example, you can really size uh, your green screen exactly in the virtual space as your real space. Meaning if you had a small green screen and you wanted to pan your camera away from that, you don't want to see your set, you want to see the virtual set. And once you set up your virtual studio green with your real studio green, you can move your camera off the green and Eximetry will be showing you the virtual set, not your set. Uh, Misha, if you don't mind, pan left for me here to show what we're talking about. So if you look over there, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this left wall and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to take this front wall, put it there, take our green floor, take it out to here. and. There, we're going to take our green left, and if you look there, we're sort of matching our wall. Now, Misha, if you don't mind, uh, center that shot back up for us, and tilt up. We want to look at the ceiling now. And so there's a ceiling, and we're going to put that exactly right there. Okay, now tilt down and pan right for us. Okay, woof. So now we're going to take our green right and take this to here and go ahead and center up and tilt down. Keep on tilting as far as you can go. Wolf right there. We're going to take our floor and we're going to take it back to that tracker pointer. Okay, you can tilt back up. Okay. So if you don't mind, just lock the camera there. Uh, we've got our scene set up. Uh, we've got our studio set up. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little break. We're going to mount uh, the camera on a slider. It's Friday here at Video Bread, and uh, we'll find some folks that want to have a couple of beers in this virtual bar. And uh, we're going to see what kind of uh, uh, camera moves we can make. See you shortly. Ain't no place for a country boy like me Swinging doors on the floor That's where I've been wishing I could be Put me down in a little town
Wow, was that fun or what? After we got everything set up, we literally shot that within 30 minutes. Minimal lighting. Uh, Eximetry's here is the best in the industry. And there's rumors that they're improving it and there's going to be a new version. Can't wait to test it out. Another cool thing about Eximetry is the ability to have virtual billboards where you can put your talent in front or behind of a 3D object and move around it. It's so cool. I'm just excited about virtual production in general. When you see NVIDIA coming out with like neural radiance fields, nerfs, and it'll just be a matter of time before you can take your location, capture it, and put it into virtual production. It's very exciting times. And to be able to have a great software package, a great hardware package that costs less than $20,000 to get into virtual production is insane. And the folks at HTC Vive, the folks at Eximetry, they're always improving their hardware and software and I cannot wait to see what happens in the next six months. This is Jamie from Video Bread. Hope you and yours are well and I hope to see you soon. Thanks.